Welcome to the Paid Search Podcast. My name is Chris, and I'm going to jump right in because I'm going to make this the most impactful, useful 30 minutes that you can get out of your day about Google Ads. I'm going to talk about Google Ads. That's what you're here for. Let's jump in because I have a history lesson to share with you, and I promise you it is going to be informative. I promise you, you will learn something and you will take application from what I'm going to share with you today. You're going to enjoy it. And I'm serious. Let's jump right in with the first question of the day. Stick around later in the show because when that's when I'm going to go into how things have changed in Google Ads and what it means to you. So question from a listener, which if you'd like to send in a question, you can do so at the link in the description and I'll answer it on the show. All right, question from Kyle, I believe. I totally deleted the person's name. Let me look it up. Yep, it's Kyle. Thank you, Kyle, for sending in a question. Kyle says, Hey, Chris, I'm a new listener, but big fan of your No Fluff show and can't get enough of it. And it has had a profound impact on establishing new ad-related processes as a marketing director at an agency. Oh, great. Glad I'm influencing uh, the the PPC world out there. Glad to hear it. I'm trying to improve it for the better. <laughs> One manager at a time. Plus, it's like getting a masterclass in Google Ads on my commute. Thank you for all the work you put into it. We're all very grateful. Plus, Optio is an amazing tool. Now use it every day. Guys, Kyle is not a plant. I have his email address. He's a real person. He wrote that. So I have to tell you, optio.com slash PSP is what he's talking about. If you don't know what Kyle's talking about and you're like, Optio, what is that? What is Optio? Optio is an online tool designed to help you get more out of your Google Ads, to improve your Google Ads management process. Kyle is a marketing director and an agency and Kyle wants to get more done in his day. So he's using Optio to help him make adjustments to his kid, uh, kids, <laughs> bids. Maybe I'll help you with your kids. I don't think so. Don't think they want me to say that. But bids, <laughs> keywords, negative keywords, all these different aspects. There are, a, there are so many things to look at. You're probably missing a few things. And Google uh, Optio prioritizes your Google ads to make sure you're paying attention to the things that matter the most. And that's what Optio is about, getting more done with Google Ads and getting on with your day so you don't bog down and miss the important things that you don't want to miss. So you can try it for free at optio.com. That's O-P-T-E-O dot com slash P-S-P for a two-month free trial of the tool. And you can be really cool like Kyle is. Let's continue on with Kyle's question. I have a client who's in the Houston carpet industry. They sell, install all kinds of carpet, which you know that industry is beyond competitive. And Kyle, you're right. I have had carpet clients specifically in the Houston area, and it blew me away how expensive the CPCs are and how difficult it is. I mean, you can't mess around. You don't throw little budgets and little bids at that. I mean, you got a bid and you got a bid serious. This is a super highway. You can't play around putting with little bids. I mean, you got to you got to go. So, Kyle continues. Despite a bunch of different efforts, employment related inquiries keep coming in, mostly in Spanish. My clients my client doesn't speak Spanish and can't answer these requests, but we're paying for them. Okay. So because you say that, I assume that you are certain that you see these conversions and you know that this conversion was a Spanish job related inquiry that you're getting. Okay. So I, I assume there's a connection there. Despite all the negative keywords, adding text saying we're not hiring in Spanish on the landing page, we're still getting these types of leads. It's beyond frustrating. Okay. So, Kyle, um, I, I, I absolutely know what you're talking about. 
Uh, I do. I have dealt with this many times in different industries. I do not feel that this is specific to the carpet industry in any way. Um, and I'm going to throw some ideas out. And I, I don't want to insult you. I'm sure that it's multiple of these ideas that you you, you are aware of. Uh, but I'm just going to start at the bottom and kind of work my way up through a couple of checkboxes that are immediately in my mind about what the problem could be. So number one, the first place I check for something like this happening, especially with Spanish, international, non-English and kind of traffic coming in, it's going to be search partners. So the search partner network, check to see how much traffic you're getting there. Check to see where these conversions are coming from. Do a uh, segmentation at the campaign level for the network type and see where these conversions are coming from. Okay, that could be it. Now, let's assume that's not it. Okay, next thing is your location setting. Your location setting plus broad match keywords plus automated bidding could allow for some really crazy uh, traffic to come in where you have your location setting set to people who show an interest in your area and not just people in your area. So check your advanced options in your location targeting and make sure that you are targeting people in your area, not people who show an interest because this could be someone outside of Houston. Someone in Mexico that's searching for carpet jobs in Houston, they can see your ad, click on it, and apply. Right? So that's another deeper setting, a little more, little more advanced there, um, but that could be a possibility. The next thing, check to see if you have the display network. Display network is can absolutely be a destructive quality of traffic place where you get tons and tons of unqualified clicks from things that you don't want to show up for. You can show up on all kinds of sites and you could be getting this traffic, these bots, you know, I don't, I don't know what they are. Maybe they're real people. Maybe they're not. I don't know, but the display network could be it. Okay. So those are settings that could be in your search campaign. Um, of course, if it's not any of those, it could also just be your search terms. Now, I, you listen to the podcast, so you hear me say all the time about search terms. So I'm going to assume that there's not much chance of this, but just in case I'm going to say it, just to cover all my bases, if you're having quality problems with leads and you don't have any of the things that I talked about, I mean, definitely I assume that it's not directly in your search terms, that you don't actually see jobs for career in, hiring for, stuff like that, in your actual search terms, in your search campaign. I mean, obviously, that would be an easy one, but just to cover that, if none of the other things happen, then a normal Google.com search campaign could definitely still be getting that, even if it's in Houston, even if it's just Google.com, even if it's not the display network, it could still be getting that traffic. Okay. So I go through all the super obvious ones. Now we move on to a couple of other things that could be causing this. Another thing that could be causing it is I find that this is a chronic issue with performance max campaigns or other smart campaigns in general. So smart campaigns are different than performance max. Performance max is focusing on the person the audience, the, you know, a lot, a lot more, more of a personal audience building kind of campaign. And it's going to be something that you don't really have control with the traffic, the, you know, where the traffic is coming from, who it is, what they're actually searching for, if they're even searching. So this would be a very difficult one to identify. In most cases, if I'm having a problem like this, which I'll give you an example in just a minute, I actually am having this exact same problem uh, in a different industry, different kind of way. But the only way that I've been able to address it is 
I eventually phase out and eventually stop the Performance Max campaign to see if the problem persists. That if you're running Performance Max, perhaps phasing it out or outright pausing it just on Monday morning, just pause it Monday morning, turn it off for one week and see if those types of leads, those type of junk clicks stop. Now, if that doesn't fix it, perhaps a smart campaign might be the issue too. That one's a little easier to spot because you can see some of the search terms there. There is a little more uh, diving you can do into the actual search terms in the account because you can split smart campaigns out and see the networks that it's showing up on. So it might be interesting to split the smart campaigns out segment by network type and see if you're getting a whole bunch of search partners or display network or possibly uh, search terms inside of that smart campaign that's leading to these jobs. So hopefully, hopefully one of those options has sparked an idea and you can try it right back if one of those was it. I'd be interested to, to hear back from you, Kyle. But but let me give an example of, of how I deal with this one with, with one, one, one of my clients. I have a client who is a attorney and he is trying to bring in people who are looking for a social social security disability attorney, someone who needs to contest something or someone that's been denied for a disability or you know some kind of issue where they must go ab about something in a legal way. They're looking for people who need assistance in that avenue of uh, you know legal assistance for social security. So the problem is not that this particular client is getting tons and tons of job applications. What they get is people who are calling the social security office in their area. They call this company and I'm, I'm talking multiple, multiple times a day, just constant, just multiple times an hour constant phone calls is, you know, is this a secure social security administration? They have a question about payments or, you know, just a billion questions and that's all they get. They, they get, they almost get no legitimate leads and get all junk. So how have I, how have I been addressing this exactly as I've been describing what I started with was eliminating some of the leaks of the campaign, different networks that could be leading to junk calls. Also adding a lot of negative keywords that, for example, any, any searches that contained phone number or what is the phone number, you know, searches like this are immediately out. I can see these because it is a search campaign. Also, I've been focusing on eliminating the performance max removing all the traffic out of the performance max and actually shutting it down right now. I'm still in the middle of this and I've actually turned off performance max. I've, I've, I'm, I'm trying to stop it happening on the search campaign. It's, it's been impossible because it's an automated bid broad match and it just keeps pulling in this traffic. So what is my ultimate solution? The client is just getting junk. They're being overwhelmed. I get emails every day from the client saying, well, we got 20 more calls thinking we're the social security administration. We got 30 more calls thinking we're social. I mean, it's just, it's overwhelming their, uh, their, their employees, their intake team. So what I had to do, the final solution for this was I, I, I had to start building a new high quality search campaign that just eliminated the social security general term and just went after people who are looking for legal assistance, attorney, lawyer, stuff like that. You know, been denied for this. I need help, legal, legal help, you know, people that are looking for a service and not just the thing itself. So in a way of speaking to everyone here that's listening to the podcast, not just Kyle, but if you find yourself dealing with quality issues in your Google ads account, perhaps part of the problem is that you are advertising on the thing itself. Just 
social social security, right? Horrible keyword, horrible keyword. Google will match you to unwanted searches because a noun, a term, a proper noun, no matter what it is, if it's just a person's name, it's going to bring about a wide range of unqualified traffic because there's no meaning. There's no understanding of that term. What makes more sense and perhaps would help you is stop advertising on the word itself, carpet or cleaner, carpet cleaner. You know, those kind of terms are may not be enough to guide the algorithm to get you the traffic that you want. If you're having trouble with bad qualified traffic, with bad leads, maybe the algorithm is sending those people to you because you're enabling the algorithm to do it. So how you can fix it is fix the source. Fix the source of what the algorithm is reading and what it reads are your keywords. Pick better keywords, smarter keywords, keywords that give definition to what you're looking for. So instead of social security, you say lawyer for social security, lawyer for denied disability, right? These are terms that imply action, need, solution, problem, professional, those types of searches are going to elicit different traffic. And hopefully that'll fix some of the issues that you're having. So I want to move on now with the main part of the show because I'll give you a little back, a little background on this. I... I got a really good question in, which is still in my queue from someone who's sending in a question, a question idea about how things have changed now versus in the past. And and I thought this was a, a really interesting way to do it, but I thought, well, before I answer questions like that, or before I get into that, one thing that is, I think, important is to understand the context of how Google Ads has changed in 20 years. I've been managing Google Ads for clients since 2003. So... 20 years, I've seen a whole world shift in Google Ads. Set aside the way the interface looks. Obviously, we went from very, very simple navigation on the left or navigation on the top, really, and moving now into some kind of massive just just buttons and levers everywhere. It's, it's been quite overwhelming to see how things have changed in 20 years. And I thought it would be interesting to go through if you are thinking about restarting your Google Ads or you used to do Google Ads 10 years ago and now you, you, you're you ready to get back in. You know, what do you need to be aware of? What do you need to to know about Google Ads that you didn't know 10, 10, you know, 10 15 years ago, maybe 20 years ago? And... That's what I'm going to go through here is I'm going to go through kind of the, not necessarily decades, um, I'm going to kind of break it up into different parts, phases that I would consider big shifts and go through what those looked like and, and, and where you can know where you are now. So when you hear advice, you can kind of know which decade that resides in, right? <laughs> is that a 2000s decade advice? Is that a 2010 decade advice? Is that a 2020 or is this advice for 2024, right? Um, you need to know where that relates, you know, because there's tons and tons of information, advice, YouTube videos that you can watch, podcasts you can listen to, but how do you know it's still relevant now? So let's get into it. And I'm not going to start at the very beginning of Google Ads because I wasn't around. And I got, I got in on Google Ads a couple of years after it started. If you're interested, I started Google Ads in 2003 because my dad, I actually graduated college in 2003. My dad owns a business and he had said, you know, he talked about wanting to advertise, he needed to advertise and he, I, you know, he needs, he needs more business. He, he's a service provider. And I was like, Hey, this, he ever heard of Google, you know, back then it was, it was new. Um, you know, Google has this, uh, these ads you can put up 
So I started there. I started with my dad's company and kind of playing there and working on that a little bit. Then I, you know, got a little bit of time under my belt playing with it. I was, you know, incredibly grateful that I got the opportunity to try it because what that led me to was being hired by a company to do it full time in house at that company for uh, several years. Then moved over to an agency and did it for a whole bunch of clients. <laughs> really, really not something I enjoyed at all. Um, and and got immersed in the PPC culture at that point, and then started my own business back in two thousand. Uh, 2009. So during that journey, I saw multiple things. Back in 2003, things were very minimal. One headline, one description is essentially what we're talking about. I, I, I believe it was, fifth, I didn't do any research, by the way. I'm just literally pulled this up, pulling this out of my head. So if I'm wrong on some of these numbers and stuff or dates, forgive me. But I believe we had something like 15 characters in our headline and maybe 30 characters in description. We had manual bids. Uh, if there was anything else, I don't remember there being other bid strategies, but I believe, I know we had manual bids. Manual bids have been around forever. So if you know, when you hear people talking about manual bids or this new thing of manual bids, no, manual bids have been around forever. And if you've listened to a couple episodes of me, especially uh, where I debated Joey, uh, that is something I say will be around forever. It's not going anywhere. I think I mentioned that last week. And it was Google only, right? There was not any other networks, I believe, that, that you would show up on, at least at the beginning. And you might be shocked to know that quality score, ad rank, the ad rank formula, was at the beginning of Google Ads. It's always been with us. And if you don't know what the ad rank formula is, it is the backbone about why your ads cost what they do. Because it's your bid times your quality score. That's what ad rank is. So you take your bid, $5. You take your quality score, you know, 10 out of 10. And so your ad rank would be 50 it's a very simple, very simple application of it, but that's how it works. So the higher your ad rank, the better, the higher you can show, the better chances you have of, of showing very high on Google. So if you have a very good quality score, you can show very high, even with a low bid. That's been around forever. That's been the cornerstone, the backbone of Google Ads. It's been around since the beginning. Now, let's skip quite a few years. Let's skip like 12 years. So around 2015, now 2015, I am doing my own thing. I'm working my own business. It's basically the same thing I'm doing now. Uh, working, I've always worked alone. So I'm managing clients and growing. And back then at 2015, that's when SCAGs were very popular. SCAGs, single keyword ad groups, okay? S-K-A-G, SCAGs. So SCAGs were very popular because of something I'm going to get into a little bit later, but they were very popular at that time because you could put something in exact match, something in phrase match, and you would get the output of that almost exactly as written. And believe it or not, there was actually a time, a, little year, a few years before this, where you could actually, and I'm going to try not to get upset and nostalgic over some of these wonderful options that were in Google ads back in the day. But there was actually an option to turn off vari keyword variation. You could actually turn that off and tell Google, don't vary my keywords in this one, which was phenomenal because if something was extremely niche in Google ads, you could actually say, listen, I only want exactly what my keywords say. So if I put this as a phrase match, only match it with this word, then this word, then this word. I don't, I don't want any variations happening or any fuzzy matching. Phenomenal setting. I wish I had that setting nowadays. So 
Skag was great because what you could do is you could set up a formulaic system where you have an ad group, an ad group, an ad group, an ad group for all these different ways that people would be searching. And you could control the traffic and bids and everything at the ad group level. So you had one keyword per ad group. Very scientific, very formulaic. Okay, so that's mainly what I want to say here is that essentially you could use, you know, what we might call like a brute force kind of keyword system. You just would, you could saturate your account with tons and tons of keywords, use manual bidding and achieve what you're looking for because it was reliable connections to very specific search terms that would show up for those. And you could monitor for that and you'd get conversions and traffic. And it was a very scientific kind of approach. Okay. So skags were great. Skags were very important. Skags were something that I leaned into for a little while and, and then moved away from it at some point, which I'll talk about in a minute. But also back in 2015, the ads were longer. They, st they started showing more. They, we started getting longer ads, extend, uh, uh, expanded text ads, ETAs, as they were called, expanded text ads came out around this time. So now suddenly we have, you know, two headlines, three headlines, longer descriptions, uh, you know, 30 characters. And, you know, it things are growing. A lot more opportunities. There's a lot more settings in Google Ads. Okay, now let's fast forward to a little closer. Things are going to start resembling where we're at now. Now let's move into 2019, 2020. Okay. Now... Moving into the 2020 time, the right side of Google Ads is gone. Or sorry, the right side of Google.com is gone. You may not remember, but there was one point where there was the ads at the top of the search. Then there were the ads that showed over on the right, and they were shorter, smaller, but they showed separate from the search results. They kind of hovered over there on the left amazing system because you could rank your average position, which is a metric that also disappeared by 2020. Your average position could be five or six, but you could still be getting visibility. This is where back in the day, Amazon, eBay, I mean, these, these sites, the, you know, this, this kind of stores that just wanted to be there for everything. They wanted to show up for everything. They could be there for everything because they were always on the page. They would show up at the very bottom position. They would aim for that very bottom position. So you could get massive search impression share saturation and bid pennies. An amazing system. Now that's gone. By 2020, I think it happened a little bit sooner, but it's gone. So now we're living in a world of a one column search right? Only the ads at the top, only uh, the ads at the bottom. Also, this is pre-infinite scroll. So there is a first page and second page still in 2020. And a key thing that happens around this time as well is we lose modified broad match. So when you hear people talk about modified broad match and you may have some modified broad match in your account. This, there is a point when that ended around 2020 and you could no longer use them. They were no longer recognized as a, uh, a system that you can trigger traffic with. I won't go into how it worked because it doesn't matter. The point is you can't use it anymore. So we had to start using other ways of getting that traffic. Mainly it moved to the use of broad and phrase. You had to use kind of combinations and different strategies to do that, but, but we lost modified broad match. Also, on the Google side, we got a big push on a lot of different things. We got a new interface, which got a lot of pushback. People did not like the new interface. You, you could actually hang on to the old interface for a long time until there was a final deadline date and everyone was pushed to the new interface. A lot of pushback there, but eventually, you know, it gave us more options and we got used to it. 
And I anticipate new interfaces happening all the time. I hate it. I hate new interfaces when they happen because I have to relearn and, and they usually take away things that we had before. Now they're gone. Really frustrating. But new interfaces started rolling out a little more often. Also, there was an aggressive push back in 2020 to get automated bidding on more accounts, max clicks. Uh, actually, actually, it was it was uh, there are different names for it. it uh, maximize clicks, I think, was some of the original. Then we started getting things like uh, maximize conversions. And these were not reliable. They were not something that people really liked very much because of one main thing. And that was just the technology. The technology was not reliable. You couldn't really rely on these algorithms to get you what you needed. So they were around and they weren't trusted as much. Additionally, we had smart campaigns, which really started getting pushed. Average position, as I mentioned, is now gone. And a big thing that started changing is Google started rolling out verification. So account owners had to start verifying that they were real businesses and doing all kinds of tax stuff to, to, to associate their business with this account. This is in response to issues where spamming fake companies, uh, you know, phishing situations would happen where, where companies would be advertising, but they weren't who they said they were and they, they would scam people out of money. So verification was a response to that kind of system. And it really helped solidify the fact that once you have an account set up and verified, there's no more, no more hopping around on other accounts that really solved a lot of the issue because people actually used to pay, believe it or not, back in the day before verification, there was actually a system uh, where if you had an account that had spent money and had no policy issues, you could sell those accounts on your Google ads account for, I don't know how much, but they were very valuable for people outside the United States. They would, it would actually, there would actually be a market for this accounts that had been around and were reliably serving ads without policy issues. People would buy access to these is uh, is crazy world. And then verification put, you know, pretty much an end to that. So now here we are in 2024. So that gives you some perspective about where we were. Let me tell you about 2024 and real quick optio.com slash PSP to get a two month free trial of the tool. Okay. We're back and lost the, the fact that we lost modified broad match was you know, one blow, but in 2024, 2023, uh, well before 2024, between 2020 and 2024, we lost really our ability to control our ad copy. We lost responsive search ads. We lost responsive search ads, which was the replacement for expanded. Uh, actually I'm, I'm saying this wrong. We lost expanded search ads. Expanded text, yeah, E-T-A. So we lost expanded text ads and we got responsive search ads. So what that basically means to me and you know what, how, you know, how I see that as a bigger picture is basically we lost control of precision ad copy. For, for all understanding you know, and how I use it, you could think of it this way. I, I lost the ability to do AB testing like I want. I lost the ability to be able to do, you know, precision AB testing to be able to see click through rate. You know, now you can do it, but you only have three ads that you can do. So you're, you're limited to only three and there's a lot of limitations there and it's not really ideal. Supposedly you get punished by pinning ads that have, you know, poor ad strength. So it really ties our hand on AB testing and ad copy and things like that. Okay, another thing that rolls out at this point, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, we start losing search terms. We start losing in some accounts, 80% of our search terms, 70% of our search terms, 60%. Most accounts see about a 50% loss in their search terms. 
And as a consolation prize, we got back a bunch of zero click one or more impression search terms. So believe it or not, years ago, when you looked at your search terms, you only saw search terms that you got clicks on. You didn't see stuff that you got impressions on. Now we've lost traffic that we got clicks on and we get instead traffic that we get no clicks on. So you can understand the frustration in managers at this point, losing ad copy control. We lost modified broad match being pushed more towards automated bidding. And there's a lot of things that are out of our hands. Suddenly we, it's, it's sand sliding out between our fingers. We can't control the things we used to control. So what are we given instead? Well, <laughs> we're giving, we're given even more of a push on automated bidding. Now, the good news is, is that automated bidding at this point, post 2020 starts to show a lot more promise. The system becomes a lot smarter. 2021, 2022, it's a lot smarter than it used to be more reliable, which is great. It's a lot more systems that seem to trigger and work better and become smarter at gathering traffic at understanding who is who and what's more likely to convert and what isn't this, this is great. But at the same time that this happens, the meanings of keywords are changed. And this happens particularly, this happened particularly around 2021. The meaning of a keyword has changed. And I've talked about this pretty extensively um, on my podcast. If you're interested in more detailed discussion, um, there's a particular episode you can scroll through. I think it was October, September, October, 2023, where I discussed this more in depth. But essentially keywords are now changed where... You remember before where I talked about skags? I talked about skag where you, if you put three words in a phrase match, you're going to get those three words in that order. Well, now that rule doesn't apply. That's not true anymore. Now, if you put three words in a certain order in phrase match, eh, some of those searches may have all three in that order, but a bunch of other ones won't have maybe the middle keyword, or maybe they won't have the first word. Maybe they won't have any of those and they're all synonyms or they're all, you know, uh, different, misspelled, synonym, uh, different order, or something like that. So now keywords are topically matched, subject matching, not word to word matching. They are topically matched to the search term that happens. So now again, a loosening, a loosening. And where, and where does, where, where does this go? Where does it funnel to? It funnels into algorithms and black box mystery areas of Google ads that we can't see and, and don't understand. So it can be frustrating. And that is leading into now, most recently, AI, AI tools popping into our inter interface, wanting to build our campaigns for us. Um, performance max campaigns that are kind of a vending machine of Google ads, put the money in, you know, punch in a few numbers and voila, here's conversions. All of which I'm a bit critical of. And ultimately, to draw all this together, what does this lead? What, what do I find that this has led to? Well, on the client side, on, on your side, if you're, if you're the one spending the money, I very often find that some industries find a lot of frustration in that they say, you know, I used to invest 10 grand in Google ads and I would get 60 grand back out of it. Now I invest 10 grand and I might only get 20 out of it, or I might get just my 10 back. And this happens because of a saturation of the market, a loosening of some of our controls, a lot of mysterious things kind of dissipating into the Google ads environment that we just can't see and can't control like we used to. So it's hard to make Google ads a science anymore, but we don't have a choice. If Google ads works for you or you want it to work for you, you don't have a choice. You still have to work with these same tools. The tools of decades ago are gone. Skags and modified broad match and uh, getting ads in fifth or sixth position for just a couple cents. 
Those days are gone. They're not coming back. You won't be able to do that anymore, but there's still a way to make it, make it successful. But since you see how things have moved over the years, that, that's, that's where we are now. And to, and to flip the view on you for one last point, what I find is that the, the simplification of some of this stuff, the point and click set up kind of easy thing has led to many new managers, many new agencies, many new people in the Google ads environment, but very few experts, very few people who understand the why they understand the how they don't know the why they don't understand the reasoning. They know if they click and punch, right? They understand how to do it. They don't understand the why. They don't understand what the results of their effort is and how to get different results and how to modify and how to analyze those results. Lots of managers, many, many agencies. The market has grown hundreds of times what it used to be. And now we're in a very saturated market of a lot of people that are confused and don't exactly know how to manage it and how to how to use it. Just a, a, a lot of very weak managers. And, and that's part of what this show is about. To try and get you to be a better manager, to get you to be a better manager of your account, your client's account, your be a better employee of your agency, whatever that is, to bring up the world of PPC despite the hardships and the difficulties of you know having to work in an environment that seems to to be a little less friendly to managers, you still can do it. There are still plenty of tools, as I can attest to the many, many people that I see having excellent success in Google Ads. It's still possible. Don't think that it it's impossible. It, it is. It is possible to have success. But now you know where we came from and where we are now. So I thank you very much for being a part of the show. You can find me at chrisschafer.com. Link is in the description. Thank you so much. I will catch you. 